I have learned a lot of things in life, skipping from one domain to the other, leaving it after mastering it fully. Like I started from mechanical engineering in which I did my bachelor's and then I did some sort of research in material science in which we were able to file for a patent and that patent was actually granted. So now we have a patent in some material science stuff and then I again came to mechanical engineering for my master's and then I switched midway to robotics and AI to complete my master's in that and now I am working as a software engineer. And through all of this journey, I have noticed something. I learn new things faster than anybody else around me. This is not to say that I'm the smartest, but this is to say that I do have systems in place which help me do that. I call this the IDE method, index, drill, evolve. Three steps which let me compress months of learning into weeks slash days, whatever you want to call it. And in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly how all of it works so that you guys can also inculcate this framework into your learning process. And we are going to start with one mistake that destroys absolutely everybody's learning speed. If you're new to the channel, I'm Anudeep and I work as a software engineer by the day. And on this YouTube channel, I make content on tech, AI, entrepreneurship and self-improvement. So if any of those things sound interesting, please consider subscribing enough of the cheeky plug finally let's get started here is what killed my learning for way too long i would watch tutorials i would copy paste stuff build the thing that they are building and absolutely feel great about it but then i would try out something new on my own without the help of any tutorial or any playlist and blank screen no idea where to start or what to do all because i wasn't actually learning I was just passively consuming tutorial hell as they say. I've actually made a video on that topic so feel free to watch it but if you are in one of those hells you should absolutely get out of there because it is one of those tricky places where our brain feels as if we are learning a lot but we are getting nowhere. We are not learning anything because you see software engineering or any sort of engineering I talk about software engineering because a lot of you people watching this YouTube channel are aspiring software engineers or are already in the industry so I take examples from that but any sort of engineering for that matter does not require memorization you don't need to remember the syntax or the framework or whatever it is all plastered on google and nowadays on claude or chat gpt or whatever llm you use but what you do need to know is pattern recognition you need to understand how things work in the first place and i realized this when i first finished a tutorial series on youtube of something that i was learning maybe it was python or something when i was initially learning to code and then i opened up my vs code and i was not able to do anything without the help from the video or from any other source material and that is when I realized something had to change. So I built a system for myself and I haven't looked back. So the first step of the system is index. This is the step most people skip. Big mistake. So before you actually try to learn anything, spend at least one hour making a list of all the things that you need to know in that particular topic. So for example, when I was learning JavaScript, I made a list of all the things that I needed to learn, you know, functions, variables, data type, lists, uh, like DOM manipulation, async functions, whatever, all of it, like in Notion or Google Doc or whatever, but it has to be a running list. And I think it is very important to keep the list running because no matter how extensive research you do, because as a beginner, you do not have the complete idea of what you have to cover in that particular topic. And as you are going through the topics, as you are being introduced to new concepts, you keep on adding to that list so that by the end of it, you are able to cover an extensive chunk of that particular skill or concept or subject or whatever you're trying to study. Remember, at this stage, you're not trying to learn anything deeply. You're just, you know, surveying the landscape, like what exists, what fits together, what are all the things that I need to learn in order to be able to proficient at that skill. And once you have made the list, do not fall into the trap in which I fell into. Because you see, making an index feels so good. It feels like I have a grasp of all the things that I have to learn because I have already, you know, have had a shallow understanding of it and, you know, the dots are connecting loosely. So I can think that I'm an expert at something. It's sort of a dopamine hit saying to me, yes, I know what I need to learn and the path is clear. But knowing what to learn is not the same as learning that thing. I realized this when I had these beautiful lists for, you know, three, four different topics that I was learning, but I couldn't solve a damn thing because I hadn't practiced. So now what I do is I would spend at least one to two hours doing shallow learning of all the things that I have to cover in that particular topic, like reading official docs, maybe even watching some YouTube tutorials or asking ChatGPT to explain something to me. And I build that list. It's messy. It evolves over time. That's fine. But now you have a map. Now you have some form of navigation, which you can follow. And this sets you up for actual learning to happen. Step number two, drill, baby. 
this is where you actually learn after i make my index i practice approximately 30 to 50 different types of problems on that particular concept not tutorials not reading actual practice problems and me struggling through it and this part actually sucks like you're on question number 15 and your brain is screaming for you to go and watch that video because that requires less brain power and you can just consume it passively and it'll also give you the hit of learning something but you won't be able to implement it because you haven't tried it yourself so there's all this weird sort of things that are happening in my brain at that particular point of time but that is the point I tell myself if it were easy everybody would be doing it and the only way to understand this difficult concept is to struggle through and come out on the other end like I get stuck on every third or fourth problem I have no idea what to do so I ask Claude or ChatGPT or even I read official docs sometimes to know what the answer is but I don't copy the solution and actually one thing that I've started to do now is I would specifically ask Claude to not give me the end solution but to walk me through the thought process of getting to the end of the solution so that I can think through it and and even then if i'm not able to get it i just look at the solution i understand it but i try to implement it without seeing and this process continues look up at the answer look up at the concept understand it try to implement it repeat and by question numbers 30 40 50 things sort of start to click you can see patterns now the same structure repeats you realize you know this is just another version of the problem that i solved five problems ago and that is when you realized you have learned it that is when you realize that you have got it and it is time to move to the next topic not when you can just memorize all the documentation but when you can solve new problems without hitting roadblocks or even if you hit roadblocks you know how to solve them or even if you do not know how to solve them in the moment you at least know the next one two steps that you can take to get to the end result and where do you get these problems from well i ask claude or you know there are some gazillion youtube playlists which will help you practice these problems whatever domain that you want to practice because youtube is best free online education resource of all time but now i mean if you don't want to go through the entire video just ask claude to give you 10 questions or 20 questions and also the answers are all the thinking pattern to solve those questions and you're all set and for all this heavy work i usually tend to block my mornings maybe three to four hours sometimes in 90 minute chunks and that does the trick this routine done consistently over and over every single day without skipping weekends actually sometimes does the trick like puts me ahead of 99 percent of the people in this world warning all of this is hard i am not that kind of youtuber or content creator who's gonna glorify all this learning process because it actually sucks i'm making content for the right reasons guys like there is no sugar coating here i think all of you guys need to know what the actual learning process looks like so yeah it is hard but that is the only thing that works at least for me because I'm not passively consuming. I am actively struggling. And that is where the learning happens. Because the resistance that I feel, you know, the struggle that I'm going through in all those moments, that's a brain building neural pathways so that you can have pattern recognition later on after 40, 50, 60 questions. And this is where the magic happens. Like when I learned WPF, which is a .NET framework, like a .NET library, I recently switched from a embedded software engineer role to a .NET software engineer role. And I had to learn all of this. I spent actually like eight to 10 hours drilling through WPF questions and you know at the end of that learning session at the end of that weekend i could look at any wpf code and understand what's happening not because i memorized syntax well actually i did memorize it but not directly it was an indirect memorization because i was doing a lot of problems but that was not the intention but i could see patterns i could see what's happening in each and every line of code because i had practiced them i had gone through them numerous times so that is the most important step number two but if you are drilling on the wrong things you are not going to achieve your full potential so let's get to step three Step number three, evolve. Making sure you are working on the right things. Now, if you go to YouTube and you, you know, ask how to be a successful software engineer, you're going to get a bunch of different advice. Or for example, on a different note, you ask how to start a YouTube channel or how to be a successful YouTuber. You're going to get completely different advice from, you know, creators ranging from different regions of the world, having different perspectives, are on their own journeys at different stages. The advice that you get on YouTube or free educational platforms is like on different spectrums. So does that mean that some of them are lying and, you know, some of them are true? and some of the advice is false actually not because you see we require different roadmaps and different advice at different stages of our lives like what it takes for a junior software engineer to succeed or what it takes for an aspiring software engineer to break into the industry that skill set that domain knowledge is completely different from somebody who's you know interviewing for a senior engineer or a senior architect position who will have a completely different skill set like dsa might make sense for a junior engineer but like system design maybe it's for a mid-level or a senior engineer although nowadays the lines are getting blurred and even in case of a YouTuber, like the type of content and the type of effort that goes in to go from 0 to 1000 or 0 to 10,000 subscribers is very different from the effort and the type of content that is needed to get from 1 million to 10 million subscribers, right? So it is 
very important for you to identify what stage of the journey you are at in your learning process. Whatever skill that you're learning, you need to know where you stand. Are you a beginner, amateur, professional, somewhere in the middle, whatever, and then curate your roadmaps accordingly. And fortunately, in this age of AI, like it can actually help you make the perfect roadmap for you. You can just blurt out whatever you know right now and what you need to know, where you want to get, what are the skill sets that you want to have to an AI, and it can give you a perfect step by step roadmap. And if that roadmap looks long or if the skill sets that it gives you like don't make sense to you, ask the AI to break it down further so that you have even a granular understanding of what you need to know. So in summary, index tells you what to learn in a topic, drilling actually helps you learn it, and then evolving makes sure that you are on the right path, that you are not using up an outdated roadmap because you have already surpassed that skill, or if you are you know, not using a roadmap that you should use maybe five years from now because you're not at that stage yet. And that's how these three aspects work in tandem at least according to me because i'm sharing my journey on this channel right it might not be a good fit for all of you so please let me know down in the comments below if you feel that this can be a viable strategy for you to learn new skills in this age of ai because new things keep popping up and you being able to learn new things faster and better than anybody else will dictate your success in the ai world with that being said thank you so much guys for watching this video if you are still here it always means a lot and i will see you in the next one peace